Hey there, we're up to section 4 now, and we've covered a lot of ground. You've got a working install of Hadoop, and we've imported some data into it. Now, we get down to business and start doing something with that data, and that's what this section is all about, using the MapReduce computation engine and its scripting companion, Pig. Throughout this section, we'll talk about how to code in Hadoop. We'll touch on MapReduce and Java briefly, just so you know how it works, but then we'll be spending most of our time in Pig. We'll code a simple word counting application in both, then we'll go over how to use PIG for Extract, Transform, and Load, or ETL. This is probably the single biggest use of PIG in the real world, so it's important to know how to do it. We'll end up with UDFs and how to put them to use. So, let's get started. First, we'll build a word count app in MapReduce using Java. We'll use the IDE that Cloudera ships with Quick Start to create the app and export it as a jar, then run the jar in Hadoop to get our result. You ready? We'll need to go get our text document since we deleted it in the last section. So we'll just go to Upload, Files, Select, and then look for names.txt in the local file system and click Open. All right now it's back in HDFS. Beautiful. Let's close the browser and get started with coding. We'll need an IDE, and Cloudera was kind enough to include Eclipse in Quick Start, so we'll double click on that and bring it up. Okay, let's go to New, Java Project, and we'll just name it Word Count. <laughs> Original thinking there, I know. Hit Finish, and now we have a new project to work with. Let's get rid of this code from another project and start clean. We'll right-click on our Word Count project and go down to Properties, and then we'll select Java Build Path to bring in the necessary jars for building our app. Click Add External Jars, and then let's select the ones in Hadoop because those are purpose-built for working in MapReduce. We'll just take all of them and hit OK. Now let's go back, take all the ones in Client as well. Great. Now that we have those available to us, let's turn to some actual code. We'll need to create a class in Java, so new class, call it word count, hit finish, and we've started on our code. Now teaching you how to code in Java is a little outside the scope of this course, so we're going to import some existing code instead. Now it used to be that you could go to wiki.apache.org and get the code for word count. But in Hadoop 2, that's a bit of a problem because the code includes stuff that's been deprecated. If you pull this into Eclipse and make a jar out of it, it'll fail when you try to run it. So instead, we'll go to my GitHub repository for the course and pull some code from there. You can either pull it or just do what I'm going to do, just copy and paste it. So I'll grab this, copy, and then come over and paste it into Eclipse. Done. Now, let's look at what the code is doing. Up here, we're just importing the stuff we need. Nothing unusual there. That's pretty much always the first step. But when we get further in the code, we notice the influence of MapReduce. Here, we're creating our map class, which is just extending the existing mapper we imported above. And then we run into the same thing down here when we create our reduce class. We're just extending the existing reducer that we imported. All right, well, our code is good to go, so let's right-click on the project again and select Export. We want to export this as a jar, of course, and that's already selected, so we'll hit Next. And then we'll check where we're exporting to, and that's what we want. So hit Finish, verify that we want to save our changes here, and it gives us a warning, which is fine. Our jar is now sitting in the Cloudera home directory waiting to be used, so we'll minimize Eclipse and our browser and go to the command line. Now, the command to use a jar in Hadoop is Hadoop jar. Imagine that. And then we specify the path where we save the jar, then give our job a name, and then specify the input and output. I'm going to output to a directory called output here. Let it run, 
and Hadoop lets us know that the job is submitted and how we can track its progress. So let's do that. Go back to Hue, and over here in Job Browser, you can see that it's tracking our job, so let's click on it to see the details. Our current job is this one at the top that says Running, and you can see a few jobs I ran before and how they turned out. All right, our job's done now, so let's go look in the Output folder to see the result. Click on Output, and our file is this guy here. Open it up, and there's our word count. Aaron showed up four times, Lara once, and so on. So obviously our code worked just fine. If that seemed like a lot of steps just to count the words in a document, you're right, it is. In the next video, we'll look at how to speed that up with Hadoop scripting language. Pig.